My name is Adam Brady. Today I'm going to be talking to you about engineered unit process open water wetlands and how they are impacted by two extreme events, a massive flood and a complete drying event. So what is a unit process open water wetland? To start, a unit process is a plug and play or modular technology that can be added to a system or process train for a specific purpose. When most people think of wetlands, they imagine something like the Florida Everglades or a pond with cattails or bulrush growing out of it. Generally, wetlands are approximately three feet deep and rely on plants for nutrient removal. Unit process open water wetlands were originally designed to degrade trace organic contaminants through using UV light from the sun, also known as photolysis. In order to ensure that sunlight fully penetrates through the water column, these wetlands are only one foot deep and do not have any plants. To keep plants from growing within it, they are lined with a geotextile liner that is very similar to the weed barrier you can put in your garden. Once placed in operation, this liner unexpectedly became colonized by photosynthetic microbes, creating a biological mat, also known as a biomat. This biomat began removing nitrate, a primary nutrient and cause of eutrophication, at a level exceeding that of many other wetland designs. We have been investigating this system ever since. Though designed to be used as a unit process within a water treatment train, the adoption of this technology has been limited. One of the barriers for utility operators is the concern for system resilience. Given that utility operators are frequently the sole source for drinking water within their service area, the hesitation is understandable. Unfortunately, an opportunity to investigate the impacts of a flood event happened in February of 2019 when the demonstration scale wetlands shown here in the red box and the rest of the Prado wetlands were inundated by an unseasonably high flow event that brought large amounts of sediment into the wetland. When the water was turned off to assess damage and conduct repairs, the open water wetlands became this and eventually this. Though unfortunate, this event provided the opportunity and impetus to investigate the impact of extreme disruption events on an engineered unit process open water wetland with a photosynthetic biomap. Along with the flood event that you saw previously, we also investigated the impact of dewatering or drying out of the biomat to understand the potential for an open water wetland to be used in a seasonal capacity or in support of storm water and surge flows. A significant flood event and a complete drying event provide extreme end members to evaluate the potential impacts on operation of an open water wetland. Before we go any further, I wanted to define the meaning of the word resilience within the context of this investigation. We evaluated two types, microbial and operational. According to Allison and Martini, Microbial resilience is defined as the rate at which a microbial composition returns to its original composition after being disturbed. My definition of operational resilience is the ability of an engineered system to accomplish its primary function following a disruption. Two types of experiments were run. For the biomat rehydration experiment, a dewatered biomat was rehydrated in a flow-through cell utilizing an analog water based on that found in the Prado wetlands and subjected to 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours light of light. The takeaway from this experiment is that rehydrated biomat appears to demonstrate similar operational performance as a biomat that has been constantly hydrated. Now to show you the why behind it. Biomat activity is used to describe the fluctuations of pH and dissolved oxygen within an open water wetland system. In the field, diol fluctuations of pH and DO are significant, with pH fluctuating between 7 to over 10, while DO concentrations fluctuate between 2 mg per liter and 20 mg per liter. These diol fluctuations of pH and DO are utilized as a proxy for demonstrating photosynthetic performance of experimental microcosms. Within the rehydration experiment, the diol shifts in pH of the rehydrated cells, here in blue, lag behind those of the consistently hydrated biomat, in red. The experiment appears to show a lag of between 5 and 15 days for the rehydrated biomat to de demonstrate similar diol fluctuations of pH as the consistently hydrated biomat. A similar lag of 10 to 15 days for dissolved oxygen can be seen as well. Given that the removal of nitrate is a primary focus of an open water wetland, we wanted to know the impact of disruption events on nitrate removal. 
Regardless of the lag in biomat activity, all of the experimental cells remove nitrate at similar rates throughout the experiment. Though the exact removal pathway, whether it was assimilation or nitrate reduction, is not known, the removal of nitrate demonstrates the potential operational resilience of the design. What you see is a weighted unifrac ordination. For reference, a biomat is considered nascent prior to completing a growing season and mature once it has been through a full growing season. Each sample is indicated by a point with the shape and color of the point determined by the cell the sample was taken from and the status or condition of that cell. The closer points are to each other, the more similar the communities within those samples are. The microbial communities from the rehydrated cells seen here within the orange circle are not significantly different from that of the constantly hydrated cell. Interestingly, within this ordination, all of the samples from the experiment, regardless of their status, fall within a similar area as the mature cell samples, potentially demonstrating the microbial community has a similar homogeneity to mature biomat. For the flood impact investigation, Biomat from before and after the flood were placed in batch microcosms. This investigation used the same analog water as the previous experiment, with nitrate spiked to 30 mg per liter as nitrogen. Once again, all cells were subjected to 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark each day. The takeaway for this experiment is that a flooded wetland demonstrates degraded performance. However, it still provides nitrate removal and can be used following a similar event. As a result of the flood event, diel shifts in the concentration of dissolved oxygen were smaller in post-flood biomat microcosms, seen here as triangles, versus those with pre-flood biomat in circles. This appears to demonstrate that the photosynthetic activity of the post-flood biomat was lower than that of the pre-flood biomat. The batch microcosm showed that the ability of an open water wetland to remove nitrate will likely be degraded following a flooding event. In this case, the reaction rate is approximately half of the pre-flood rate. This demonstrates that an open water wetland has the potential to continue removing nitrate if returned to service quickly. A comparison of the microbial ecology between nascent, mature, and post-flood biomass samples demonstrates a significant change within the community. The post-flood biomass community was significantly different from mature and nascent biomass. As you can see, Distances between microbial communities within the nascent and post-flood samples are much greater than those of the mature samples. It appears both nascent and post-flood microbial ecologies are more heterogeneous with the microbial communities undergoing selective pressures that are not being seen in the more homogeneous mature samples. Now the key takeaways from the investigation. Open water wetlands demonstrated potential for operational resilience in both disruption events. Rehydrated biomat appears to attenuate nitrate at a similar rate as the consistently hydrated biomat. Following a flood, the nitrate removal rate of open water wetlands appears to be degraded. However, their performance does provide flexibility for operators to evaluate and triage damage within the system and make repairs. With respect to microbial resilience, Open water wetlands responded to each type of disruption differently. Rehydrated biomat demonstrates microbial resilience given that the differences between the rehydrated and constantly hydrated communities were not significant. Flooded biomat displayed limited microbial resilience, instead becoming significantly different from both nascent and mature biomat. Open water wetlands demonstrated potential for use as a seasonal or surge treatment process. As a reminder, this investigation only looked at how cells would perform if they were dewatered after being in operation for a full growing season. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time. Please provide any comments or questions below.